Today gonna be the start of the G6 panoramic sunroof install on the box Chevy. If y'all can recall, go back to the first video when the owner dropped it off. He had told me the car that they got this out of, the owner thought it was leaking. So they put silicone around it, sealed everything up. Come to find out, it was one of the drain tubes. It was unloose. So we gonna clean all this up. And I asked everybody to drop a comment in the first video or to be the easiest way what would be the easiest way to get all this silicone up without damaging the rubber but some of the rubber damaged anyway right here and most of the comments it was like get a racer wheel so that's what we got we got four i don't think it's gonna take all four on but we got two different sizes it's a thin one and a thick one I also got some steel wool, zero, 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 defined. It won't damage the glass. But we're gonna put one of these eraser wheels on my drill. No, first we're gonna take a razor blade. I got a razor blade as well. We're gonna take a razor blade and uh, get the biggest of this silicone up. Enjoy it up like this, then we're gonna clean it up with the racer wheel. I got the biggest of it up. Now I gotta wire it up so I can open it up and get it out the cracks off the rubber. If I use the wire wheel. Here's the results after the cleaning. I got all the glass clean, but the weather stripping, some of it can be saved. Because when they was trying to clean it off before I got it, they punctured a lot of it. But he can always get a replacement seal. But I got all that off the glass. Let me open it up and show you a little bit more of it. Let me connect these wires right quick. Okay, let's hit the one. Here is two. Here is three. And four. You can see what I was talking about right here. But this come up, you can get a replacement to take care of that. It's easily to come up. Also, this seal here. They ran in front of the glass. But everything else good to go. I'm not going to start on it today. I'm going to wait till in the morning. First thing in the morning. Then we'll get started cutting the roof out. To drop this in. Here's the next day. A little dust done landed on the glass, but everything's still good. I guess we're gonna bring the box shiver down here, set it up. I guess I put it right here. We're gonna get the frame and some of the tools that I'm gonna need for us cutting the uh, roof out. 
so we can drop it in. So y'all wait one second. Let me bring the box shipper down here. Here's the box Chevy. It's an 89. I will be painting this as well for those that haven't seen the first video. I got a lot of replacement parts. This whole front end I got brand new. But that's for another video. This video here is putting this top in. We got to cut it out. And here's the stuff that we're going to be using so far. I got a jigsaw. I got a grinder with some cutoff wheels. Also got a small angle grinder with die grinder. Cut off tool, whatever you want to call it. And here is the donor roof. The owner of the box Chevy. He just cut the whole top out. So we're gonna have to do some trimming. Before I was trimming it up. See he left the glass and all that on. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take that cut off wheel. We're going to cut all this double metal off. We're going to do away with the double. So let me get plugged up. We're going to put that off. See, I got all the double L's cut. Except this here. I'm going to leave this because it's a mountain point for the, the frame or the roof on the inside. Now we'll flip it over and we'll cut the top side out, trim it out somewhat square. I guess I put some cut lines on this back side so I can know how far the trim without flipping it over and looking. Guess I'm gonna cut it round about up in here. That should be enough. Give me a lip to mount it to the roof of the box shiver. Here's my guide points. That one here, also there. Now I flip it over and connect the dots. This top side somewhat dented in and buckled, but I gotta do the body work anyway. Ain't no big deal. Just give me more work to do. It's dented in right there as well. Probably can see it up in here. But here's my guide points. Now I'm gonna get me a straight line. And back here, I'll probably just take it to here, straight down there. And now I'll take my grinder with the cutoff wheel and follow my red sharpie there. Now I'm going to take my DA, probably put some 60 grit on it, clean up the edges so I won't cut myself. Also, I'm going to strip all this paint off down to the brown metal because I got to weld it so it'll give me a good contact point 
Plus, I got to do the body work up to this because it's dented up. Got the DA here. Six to grit. I decided to use the grinder. I'm going to put a flap disc on it. It's a lot quicker using the grinder than the DA. But the grinder, you got to be careful. It'll put a lot more heat on it as well. This is what I did. Where you see the brad metal, I used the angle grinder with the flap disc, cleaned all that up. Then I came back with the DA with the 60 grit and scuffed the white area up with the white paint at. And I just did this so I can have somewhere to clamp close to where I'm gonna be welding at on all four sides. I got stung by a bee so you might see my hand swole. I had this land up against the shop and when I moved it, there was a wasp nest behind it and a bee stung me. But it'll be all good though. Now, I'm gonna take this here. I was trying to find a piece of cardboard that was wide enough, but I, I don't have a piece. So I'm just gonna cut this in half and tape it together. And I'm gonna trace this out because it'll be easy to handle that cardboard moving it back and forth on top of the car instead of trying to carry this around to get my measurements. So I'm gonna trace this out on my cardboard. Here we go. I got a pin here. I'm just going around my inside, also the outside. And then I go back and cut it out. Once I get my shape. Then I put front, just the front right here. So I know that's the back with that brace. Let's move this. Now I cut this out. Here's my template. The front. Now you want to take your frame and put it on the extra glass to make sure how much clearance you're going to need for us the front and the back. Here's the frame on the glass. We don't have nothing sticking out. On some roofs, the motor might be in the front and it might be sticking past the frame. So you want to make sure everything gonna clear. That's why I like to put it on the glass before I start cutting out the roof of the car. Now we're gonna take our template and put it up here, but we gotta measure the center. And this is what I use to do to measure the center. See this crease in the hood? That's the center. Also, if you're doing the same car I'm doing, this is the center as well. So I'm gonna pull a piece of tape right in my center line. I got my center, front to back. Now I mark the same on my template, my center. On my template, my center is where the two cardboards meet because as you can recall, I had to put it together to make one whole piece. So I'm gonna put the tape right here. Just let me know, it's my center line. Same way with the back side. And we'll take this and put it on the roof. Put it where we want it. Then we'll take our template, sun it up on the roof. I got a paint marker. It's white, so I'll be able to see the marking. Make 
So you got the front, you want to throw it to the front. And you, you don't want to take it up too far because if you want to put the sun batteries up, you want to have room for those. So I should have took the trim off, but I'll go ahead and mark it before I take it off. Take your marker and trace out the middle. I decided to go ahead and take this off because it's actually in my way because I need to mark my outer as well. I got the outer just for reference so I can know where my cardboard go. But I need to mark the outer and my quarter top is in the way so I need to remove it anyway when I paint it. So I guess I'll go ahead and do that. I'll cut y'all back on once I get it removed. Here's the quarter top. Like it's kinda dented in right there. Let me show you on the car. Whoever replaced the quarter top, I guess they didn't know how to take it off the back part. And they tore some of these brackets back here where it's screwed down from the inside. Let me show you on the inside. There's some screws along this bottom side of here. They go all the way down. I guess they didn't know how to get to them. And they ripped it from the fiberglass shell. The only one on there is the middle one. That's the only thing holding it down. This middle one here. But the other ones was just laying on the inside of it. This one here still screwed down. I guess they can't get the screw out. But we got the quarter top off. It's a lot of rivets that hold them, that hold the fiberglass shell onto the roof. I'm gonna grind all these rivets out. The old ones that they left in there. And the new ones as well. Now I can you now when I do the body work, I can easily feather all this in instead of trying to work around that quarter top. Now we'll get back on track. Once I grind all these down, I cut y'all back on. Now we're back on track. Let me show you what I'm doing. Got all those rivets. Grind it down where it snipped off. Now I put my template back in place, sun it up. Then I trace out the outer. I should have found something better to mark this with. But y'all get what I'm saying. Just trace out the outer. Here we go. Now we'll remove this. You see what I was going for. But this time, I'm going to put some tape along this outer line here. That's so I have a better uh, force marking it. I can use a pen and it'll show up because we got to cut it out and you want to make sure how much room you got for us on the outer this the outer here so 
So this is how much room I got for flat metal. And on this back side, I'm just going to slide the back side in. Because I want to keep these mountain points here for the quarter top trim. So I probably cut it out round about right here. Quarter inch from the outer. Then I just slide it up under. But y'all get what I'm talking about once I get going. So let me put this tape around my outer. Here's my tape line. Now you want to get your tape measure. See how much clearance you got for us. I would say about an inch all the way around. You'll be good. Because you can always slide it up under some of it. But leave an inch. So we'll take this over here. Let me get a pencil or a pen. So. Okay. We're going to go around the whole thing. Guess we're going to do an inch and a quarter. Because like I said, it can always slide up under it. Just be on the safe side. Inch and a quarter. We're just going to go around the base set. Make our marks. Then we'll go back and connect the dots like we did before. On this back side, we'll do an inch. Because we ain't got much room to play with. For us, them mountain points. This is the following day. You can see I got my land dried out. I had stopped last night because it started getting dark. And I had something in the shop. I didn't want to cut this out and it started raining on me because it's supposed to rain in a couple of hours. So I'm going to try to go ahead and cut this out. And if it starts raining, I can just pull it in and work inside. But I'm going to take my jigs off. Let me show you what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this jigs out here. Cut it out. I'm gonna cut some slits in it first so I have someone put put my blade down in. Probably on each corner. Use a metal cutting blade. I got one on here, but I'm gonna change it out. Put, a, put another one on. This is it now. Ain't no turning back once I cut this out. side but on this front I used the cutoff wheel and cut straight across because I didn't want to use the jig so because it's actually two pieces of metal it's like a brace I didn't want to cut through the brace see this brace here if I would have used the jig so I would have been hitting this metal down here so I wanted to keep that brace there it's also a brace here I'm gonna cut through and one back there We'll go ahead and cut the rest of that with the jigsaw. It's good to cut not enough then too much because you can always cut more but you can't add on where you could you'd be welding there's too much work there 
So now we're just going to test fit it, make sure it fit. If everything fit, we're going to go back and grind all this down to brown metal on the outer edge of this tape. So we have somewhere to wear. I think we're good to go, y'all. You can see I put some tape right there. So when I do mark, uh, not mark, but once I grind all this down, the brown metal, I won't have my outline where it need to sit. I can just go by it, put another piece of tape up here. Now we'll take it back off and take all this down to brown metal. Probably from here, back. This is what it looked like after the flap disc on the angle grinder. Now I'm gonna take the 60 grit on the DA and clean it up. I don't worry about doing this here because I don't wanna grind these, the heads off. These are the mountain points to the trim. Here's what the 60 grit looked like after the cleanup. Now I'll put the frame back on position it in place and get ready to start welding. All right, I'm ready to weld now. Got the frame back in place. Lined up like it should be. And when you weld and you want to tack it, I'm going to tack all four corners first, then I'm going to come back and put a tack here. Push the metal up. You just want to go from here, maybe here. You don't want to try to Weld on a straight line because you'll whoop this metal. It's real thin. Let me show you weld, what weld I'll be using. I'm not gonna use no gas, it's just flux. But I could, I could hook gas up to it, but it's just gonna be flux. There goes the rain, what I was talking about. Had to bring it inside. Oh, another thing, make sure you cover up all your glass because you don't want no sparks to get on the glass. It'll itch into your glass. Also the seats, if you got seats in. I got it tacked all the way around. I was using my body hammer. Sometimes, cause sometimes this metal hill was up higher than this. I just had my body hammer pushing down on it. I was tacking it. I'm gonna put some more tacks in it. Probably in between all the rest of them. I'm not gonna wheel it up all the way around fully. I'm just gonna tack it. Then I'll put some fiberglass uh, mat around the whole border. It's waterproof. I tacked a little bit more in between the other tacks. Now I can remove this tape and get it out the way. I'm going to take my flap disc angle grinder and I'm going to grind down all my wheels. Get it somewhat flat with the surface. Here's after the grind wheels now we're gonna put some fiberglass mat right over the uh, wheels and that seam let me show you here's the resin here polyester resin you're gonna need a chip brush to brush it on here's the hardener mixing cup and a paint stirrer and the fiberglass i'm just cut some, i'm gonna cut some strips like this here let me show you how I'm do it. I'm gonna be putting it over the, the seam like that. I think I'm gonna need seven of these to complete on the first run. I'll probably double it up, but it's gonna take seven. It's two. Might not take seven, but 
we're gonna go with that. Okay, let me show you how I'm doing this fiberglass. Got my chip brush and my resin. I'm just brushing some on the, on the surface first, which I done done most of it. I'll show you in a minute. All right, once I put it on that, I take my fiberglass mat. Then I put it in place. You could use a roller, but if you ain't got no roller, you just use the chip brush. Just dab it like this here. To soak the uh, fiberglass mat. I'm gonna put two layers of fiberglass on it, so I'm gonna put another layer right on top of this. Then I'm gonna put another piece, let me see, let me take this so I can do it right quick. On top of it like that. But this time I'm gonna do the two layer. Then I come back with another piece like this. Just that simple. You want to make sure it's soaked real good. You don't want no air pockets. Then I'll cut y'all back on in the morning. I'm going to let this dry overnight. And we'll go from there. I just wanted to cut you back on right quick to show you how it look. Full of fiberglass. Here's the following morning. You see the fiberglass mat done dry. This here is waterproof. Shouldn't be no leaks. Plus I got it overlapping. It's like a shingle. A top layer. Water run out. So it ain't gonna leak anyway, but just to be on the safe side. Now it's time to fill it up with some fiberglass filler. I'll be using this Dura glass. I'm about out of this can here. I'm gonna open up a new one, mix up some, then we'll wipe some out. Here's the fiberglass filler. This fiberglass filler is not to get it smooth. It's just to fill up all my lower areas. Cause you just don't want to go straight with by the filler because this fiberglass filler, it's waterproof also and it's a lot stronger. So you want to build it up with the fiberglass filler then shape it up with the body filler. And once this dry, I might go back and touch up some spots that I see that are still low before I saw sanding on it. Like I said, I went around and filled up all my low areas that I seen. Now, I'm going to remove this trim before I start sanding on it. I'm going to remove this trim here and also this windshield trim. I hate to scratch it up, but I got to remove it anyway when I start doing the body work and painting. Trim removed. This upper trim was glued down there. I guess it's missing a clip, so they just glued it. I had a hard time getting it off. Somewhat scratched up the, the uh, damage the paint. But I'm painting it anyway, so it don't really matter. But now, I'm going to take the DA with some 
60 grit. I'm gonna knock all this down. I'm not trying to get it flat. I'm just trying to knock this top layer off because it's easy to sand when you knock the top layer off. This is what it look like after the DA with the 60 grit. You want to keep the DA flat as you can because if you keep it flat, it's going to show you all your low areas. Where you see these dark spots, the darker green, those low areas. So before I move any further, I'm going to take some, I'm going to uh, mix up some more fiberglass filler and I'm going to wipe those areas just to get it somewhat smooth. It's just a light skim coat. It looked like it's a lot, but I just wiped that whole section back there. Also, this front section, which this back part gonna be covered up. It's gonna be covered up from here back because that trim go right here. But I'm just gonna get it smooth anyway. We'll let this dry on up here. Move on. Now I'm gonna take the same DA with the same six degree and go over this here, knock that top layer off. I also went on ahead and put some fiberglass filler here. This is where the roof meets up with this metal here. It's a seam now. Then they just put some seam sealer. And a lot of times this be rusted out, but on this car it wasn't. It's just the seam sealer was cracked and it was, some spots was missing. So I just went on and dug all the seam sealer out and put some fiberglass filler. Let me take it up here and show you what I done did. All this been knocked down. Now it's time to get it flat. But before we start blocking it by hand, we're going to use this straight line sander. Make our job a lot easier. We're going to be using some 80 grit on it. But before we do that, we're going to wipe some guide coat on it. Because this guide coat is going to show us all our low areas. Let me get this uh, can open. Then we'll wipe some on it. Gonna be wiping it on. So I'll show you. Show us all our low areas. Once I start using a straight line, if you still see guide coat, that means that area flat. Not flat, but low. We're gonna put it on the whole entire area that we did the body work with. That we're doing the body work on. I'll do the other half in a minute so I can show you. Let's hook a straight line up with the air holes. Oh, I still got to put a piece of sandpaper on it. This sandpaper here. Been on it since my last job. 80 grit. By Durago. Now we can hook it up. Show you. Let me, blow, let me blow it off. Now you can see this low. Still gotta come down some more, which I still can come down because I haven't hit metal yet. That's low, low, low. That's what the guide code do for you. All right, let me continue. Yeah, you can see the gag coat left all the lower areas exposed.
It just need a light skim coat of wiping on those areas. And I'm not going to use fiberglass filler this time. I'm just going to use regular body filler. Because those areas are shallow and it's easy to block with just regular body filler. Same brand, just body filler. Ain't no fiberglass in it. That should be good enough for us mixing. I'm just going to be putting it over the low areas. Scam coat. Here's all my lower air is white, the body filler. I just finished hitting it with the straight line again, knocking the body filler down. Now I'm gonna put some guide coat on it. I'm gonna spray some spray paint this time because I gotta make a run. By the time I get back, it'll be dry. Plus it's not as dusty as that dry guide coat. Just lightly mist it on. I'm back. The guy coat dry. Now we'll block this by hand. It's time to start hand blocking. I'm gonna be using this block here. Also got a smaller block. I use it later on. I don't think we're gonna need this rounded block. But we're gonna put some 80 grit on it, same as the straight line. Looks like I'm gonna need to order some more. 80 grit on the road. We're gonna be going in an X pattern back and forth. This way and that way. We're moving the guide coat, same as with the straight line. Still see guy coat that mean your air low, you gotta keep on blocking. All the blocking done by hand. I found couple of spots that I gotta address like this spot here it's high it's somewhere high I'm thinking it'd be good but I'm just gonna go ahead and knock it down with the body hammer on the safe side so I don't worry about dealing with it 
on down the line. I'm just going to tap the metal part. You see the brown metal? Then I go back and put some body filler down. I'm also going to the edge around this mountain hole. And I got to get up under here and drill out the rest of the holes. So I better mount the trim. But that's pretty much it. Let me take care of that. All right, got that taken care of. You can see my holes there. Once I drilled them out from the bottom side, it kind of messed up the top part. I came back with some body filler, cleaned it up a little bit. And I also took my maroon scotch spray and scuffed up around my good area. So when I do spray the primer, it'll have something to burn to. I did this with 80 grit though. Now I take it outside, blow it off, clean it up a little, and I bring it back in, mask it up, get ready to shoot some primer. Just brought it back in. Now I take my mask with my plastic sheeting, throw it over the car. I'm gonna cover the entire car. Even though I gotta still do the body work and all these panels here getting replaced, I'm still gonna cover them. Ants everywhere. Well, let me take care of that, then I'll cut you back on. I'll be using this here. Some Maxi film. Ready to shoot some primer now. Got the car masked off. I'm going to spray at least three coats. All depends on how much I had left in the cup. sprayed it it's still flashing off I'm about to put some guide coat on it I'm gonna be using this flat black spray paint cuz I'm gonna start blocking it in the morning after this guide coat it's gonna be it for the night
Here it's the following morning. Now we'll get ready to do the final block. We're gonna be using this same block. Some areas we might use the smaller one. We're using this 150 grit. It's somewhat like 180. You can use 180 as well. Same process, it's just a finer grit. It's gonna take the 80 grit scratches out. Going in the X pattern. I can somewhat see a line here, seem like it's low. But once we start blocking, you'll be able to tell the low spots. Now you can see where the guy code at. What I was talking about, that line now. I could see it when I was spraying the primer. When the primer was wet, I could see it was some, somewhat low right there. But all this should come out. I got enough primer on here. I just got to continue removing this guy coat. Like right there, that's low. I'm getting it flatter as I go. I'm almost down to this area here. As long as you ain't hitting metal, you can go lower. And right here you can see I'm starting to hit the original white. So after that it's gonna be metal with the original primer, then the metal. Cause I'm trying to get this low area here out. All the blocking done. Here's a few spots I gotta address, which is gonna be up under the quarter top. It's a spot right here. It's low. Also, that spot. Then I'm gonna fill in these cracks here. I'm gonna put one part glaze and put it on these spots there. But right there, it's gonna be two part. And the rest are pretty much good. Nah, let me take it up here. I got a couple spots up here that I gotta put some two part glaze and put in. Spot there. Also, is a chip here. I'm be using this u paw liquid gold for the two part and the bundle for the one part. I'm ready for my final run of primer now. Those are two areas that I put with two part glaze and put in. This is the one part. On this run of primer here, I'm going to spot prime first. I'm going to spot prime all my filler areas. Because it's pierced, it'll soak up the primer. Then I'm going to go back and spray the whole entire thing. But I'm going to spot prime wherever the filler at. Just to seal it off. A little bit. I'm ant still all over the place. I already wiped it down.
primer. Just finished spraying it, still flashing off. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to unmask it because it's raining. I'm gonna let it sit out here overnight. Then we'll install the drain lines and wire it up. Then I'll put the glass in after that. Take on this side here. Right. Buried in it, but it's gonna be wet sanded it out. And I get rid of the paint. Here we go. Got everything unmasked. Now I'm gonna start wiring up everything. I'm gonna keep a dome light. I'm just gonna use the one that came off the G6 roof. It's actually right here somewhere. I'm gonna wire it into the original light. So I'm gonna have to run this wire back. I'm gonna have to add some more to it. And I'm gonna have the switch right here, like in the original G6 car. The switch gonna be here. Let me take you back here and show you what I'm doing. I'm trying to eliminate some of these wires that I'm not gonna use. Let me plug it up. I gotta run into my battery. See, I'm gonna keep these lights here. You cut on and off. I'm gonna run that to the actual roof, the power. This is gonna run to the doors, to the original dome light. So I got all the wires I need, so I'm gonna cut out the ones that I'm not gonna use. Then I'm gonna have to shorten, maybe extend some. I can't get that on there right now, but I'm gonna put it up in the roof of the car so I know what I need to cut off and what I need to extend. Yeah, I'm cleaning it up now. Like I said, I'm cutting off everything that I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use this here. Get rid of that. I'm not going to use this. Need that. Need this for the motor. Get rid of this. I think that's it. I need all this here. I guess I'll take it on the inside. Here's my hot. I got all three hots spliced into one. I'm gonna run this all the way up to the furious box. And I'm gonna uh, add a fuse. And on my ground, I'm just gonna run it to the back because since the since it's already wired in the back towards the car. I'm just going to find a good ground on the back side instead of running it all the way up to the front. Here's all my wiring. This here going to the front, these three wires here with three connections. It's going to the middle. All that hook up to the switch here. One there. 
one here also the lights then I got the dome light wire running here over the brace that used to be here all the way back to here because it sits right above the motor on the headliner here's the power wire to the motor and here's my ground I probably run my ground down through here grind it off somewhere in the trunk now I take all these down and tape them up together clean it up a little bit then I zip tie it so it won't come down here's my power see I got it taped off now and zip tied zip tied right there also here right there also here now I guess I start running my drain lines it's gonna be on all four sides the drain line on that side this side and two in the back let me get what I'm gonna be using right quick. Okay, I got some clear tubing for my drain lines. A lot of times when you get the drain lines from the donor car, they might be too short or you can't get all of it out and it might snap. So you can just go get the get some from Lowe's or Home Depot, some clear tubing. And this is a inside diameter, it's a quarter inch, outside three eighths. It fit right inside of here. And this here goes on a tray. I'll take you outside and show you what I'm talking about. But you're going to need some drill bits to drill some holes. Let's go outside. I'm going to show you where these go. See these here go on the drain tray. See if water get down up in there, it'll drain out. It'll sit in this tray here. Well, this is the bottom side. It'll sit in this tray and it'll drain out. This one go on this side. You can get a real big tubing to go directly over this hill, but a lot of times it'd be hard. If you get a big tube, you ain't gonna be able to put your A pillars on back on. So it's best to get a real small tube, small as you can. Running the drain lines now. I thought I was gonna have to take the wheel off, but I just jacked it up enough so I can get my drill and drill bit up in here let me show you i got this side here right now. you can see the drain line coming down through there and i got it show you in the trunk i don't know if you can see it it's up right there coming down from the c pillar it's the inside here Got a fish down through here. I'm gonna leave enough slack so I can hook it up. I think it should. It should be enough around about this much. I think the connection around about in the middle of the this brace. So that should be plenty. I'll go ahead and do the other side now. I came back with some weather stripping and gasket adhesive and wrapped it around my tubing just to seal it here's the front you can see i got this whole drill you have to drill through two different metals it's about an inch apart both metals but you get a drill bit this size you can do it I had removed the computer. Give me enough room so I ain't got to worry about it hitting up against now. But I would show you from this side, but I can't because the inner well is on. See, it comes out right here, but the inner well is on. But I'm going to flash a light so I can show you. It's going out the outside. I'm going to flash this light. You should be able to see the light in a minute. Can you 
can you see the light? But that's all you gotta do. And I got it running up through the A pillar. I'm gonna have the A pillar on up to here. Then I got it pushed back through there. It comes out right here. And then you just gotta feed it through both holes. I'm gonna seal it off like I did the back side. Got everything wired up, drain lines ran. Now I'm ready to put the glass in. So let me go outside and get this glass. Then I'll cut you back on. There we go. Show you all my hookups. This here running to here. This is gonna be once I do the headliner, it's gonna be in the middle right here. Then my drain lines got enough slack to hook those up. Take it to the front. This drain line, I just gotta cut some off. But. And then this gonna be right here. So let me hook all this up. Hopefully I got everything wired, no shortage, nowhere. Then I'll show you how to operate. Finished wiring up everything, putting the glass in, running the drain lines. Now let me show you the operation part of it what it looked like after the glass installed. Still able to put my LS quarter top on. I had to tuck it outside and ran some water over it. That's why you see water in the drain lines. Let me take you around to the other side here. Turn it on. Well, flip it back. Oh, let me show you the uh, interior light. See, this the interior light there. Like I said, it's going to be hanging up under the headliner. Let me shut the door, show you. Alright. And you can also cut it on from here. Well, you can see the light come on down there on the floorboard. And then we got these lights here on the switch. That they're not going to work because they wired up to the accessory with ignition. But when I flip the ignition, come on. Let me crank it up because I don't want to try to open it on a dead battery. We're going to open it all the way before. Put it on three. This two. And this one. It just got a vent on one. Then you put it on zero, it'll close it up. breathing. 
y'all stay tuned. Hold on, let me cut it off. What I was saying, y'all stay tuned. Because the next video, I'll probably paint this top. Because I got to review a spray gun. And I'll be reviewing it. And I'm going to paint the top. And I'm going to paint it in an inflatable spray booth. I know a lot of guys been asking me, have I used it yet? I'm going to use it on this here. So y'all stay tuned for that video. Close it on up for the last time. Oh, ignition. Never stop.